Jackass the video game is awesome, it's a great recreation of the show, but this opinion is mixed. Some say it's a great recreation, others don't. I say it is. Anyway, in the game you're the new director for 7 episodes. The game is a streak of 35 minigames. Some of the mechanics get repeated in those minigames, but that's not a problem, at least for me. It's also nice that before and after you get cutscenes that reenact very well the feel of the show. With the camera that wobbles because the cameraman is holding it, and the dialogue, the motion capture, everything is jackass. Though mid-stunt some complain that the feel of the jackass show is partly gone, because during a stunt you usually just see the character's face and how beaten up he gets. And you don't hear the other guy's reaction to the stunt. The minigames aren't the best ever, but they're fun, and once you complete one you can replay that stunt anytime you want. Many reviewers complained that the game is too short, it takes around 3 hours to finish the game. That's, that's not short for a PSP game, it's standard stuff. Others complain that there's no replay value to the game. Well, during my teenage years, I will put a save game with the game completed on purpose just to replay the minigames. So in my personal experience, I don't agree with those who say that the game has no replay value. So overall, the game is good, but apparently it's too short and once you complete it, it becomes boring. Anyway, the moments you play the game, it's a pretty good recreation of the show, which means mission accomplished. Kinda, because the opinion about this is mixed. Still, nobody said it's a terrible game. Every review I've read rates the game from decent to up. So any way you put it, the game is good. Or in the worst case scenario, decent. Last Ranker is a very colorful RPG, with story that has a tone that is neither dark nor light. It's nice that the game has fast travel. The points you can travel are usually at the start of a zone, but hey, you still get fast travel. The battle system is addictive, the upgrade system is interesting, you have gems that you fit into a chessboard. And gems can get a boost if you arrange them in the vicinity of compatible stones. You can buy monster repellents, which work 100% of the time. And get you rid of the random enemy encounters, which usually are annoying, but, well, you need them in an RPG. In difficulty, reviewers say that the game is too easy. Even tougher enemies that should put up a fight drop after a few moves. The quests don't change much throughout the entire game, like in other RPGs, they mostly are either fetch quests or go here and kill this monster type of quest. The story in the game is weak, not only that you barely feel like your character is getting stronger, you, you don't feel the sense of progression, but halfway through there is an alien invasion that doesn't have anything to do with what happened in the first half of the game. Sure, you're the last ranker, the last one that was taught how to stop the aliens, but still, the first half of the game was about the council, about something else. And then suddenly the story takes a 180 turn. Another part where the game disappoints is the sheer amount of scripted moments, or moments where skill is irrelevant. In most fights, if it's not the time to fight that enemy, you will lose automatically. No matter how you fight, you are going to lose because the game is scripted for you to lose. In that point, if the game didn't tell you to go there and fight that enemy. You have to fight enemies in the order the game tells you, which sucks, because you win fights in like 3 turns when you go exactly how the game tells you. The freedom in the game is limited, because if you want to progress, you need to follow the scripted events way too closely. The dialogues are also kinda cheesy in the game, so overall, Last Ranker is a game that looks good, but has many shortcomings. It's still is a decent game though. Lord of Arcana is an RPG that in my opinion is too repetitive and tedious, that after an hour of gameplay it starts to lack thrill and just becomes tedious and even gets frustrating. You start the game by creating your own character, then you have an epic intro where you obliterate every enemy and defeat a dragon, then you return to level 1 and have to work your way up to become the best. There is no story really in the game, you get some story context at the start and by the end of the game. The rest, until you reach the end, is mostly just grinding. You take on quests that revolve around beating a certain number of enemies, retrieving a certain item or beating a bigger boss. Also boss fights drag for too long, and since the fights 
aren't thrilling like in Monster Hunter, you just wish to get it over with already. Overall, the game is tedious, lacks thrill, and requires too much grinding and frustration to finish and to give you satisfaction. Especially that since you don't get a story, aside of aspiring to be the best, growing in level is the only real incentive to keep on playing. You don't even have thrilling boss fights like in Monster Hunter. Maybe some will like the game of this sort, but I don't. I like some story to my games or at least some thrill and less frustration and grinding, rather than just mindlessly growing in levels by a lot and a lot of grinding. Also if you like this sort of game and have also a Vita, then check out Soul Sacrifice, because that game reminds me a lot of this one. KO Challengers isn't a new entry in the franchise, it's actually KO Round 2 just downscaled and ported onto the PSP. The two games even have the same box art, only the title differs. Okay, and the PSP has something else, it has multiplayer, which the console version doesn't. Also in single player, the PSP version has 4 additional levels. It's not the first time that the PSP has more content than the console than the big console version, but yeah, this time again, the PSP has more content and the PSP version is superior in content, not really in graphics. KO Challengers is a light-hearted platformer. The characters are charming, though I have to warn you that there were some parts in the game that maybe your kids will have difficulty to pass especially if they're really young. I mean, while playing I had this sensation on multiple parts in the game that, man, a kid would have difficulties here for sure. But maybe I'm underestimated the young ones, I don't know. Some reviewers also complain that the game is very formulaic, and I totally disagree. It's true that you have a villain, in this case Barnaba, who captured animals for his evil scheme, so you have the villain, the hero, Ko goes to free the animals and beat the end boss. And to get to the end boss, you also beat smaller bosses first. The game has a hub from where you go to the 6 locations on the map. Once you platform your way through the levels and beat small fry, you beat the end boss of the section and then progress onto the next bosses and finally you get to the final boss. That's formulaic, yes, but that's a very simplistic view. You also get other familiar elements, but the game is far from being formulaic. In fact, the game pushes new elements constantly. I completely disagree with those reviewers who say that the game is repetitive and the usual. I mean, have they even played the game? Sure, it fits into the template of the game of this sort, but just because something is familiar doesn't mean that it's unoriginal or repetitive. The way Kyo moves, the puzzles, the cutscenes, makes the game a unique and charming experience. And the game pushes so much variety that you won't be having deja vus. You can split the gameplay into roughly three parts, with an occasional fourth one. Platforming, combat and tunnel sections where you slide, go on water or get chased and there are also an occasional puzzle section. In platforming, the jumping animation is weird at first but you get used to it. In combat you can make KO jump, punch, roll, tail whip, butt stomp or toss a boomerang. You can upgrade his stats with stars you collect on the map. Also most combat parts seem difficult for a little kid in my eyes, or at least that's how I feel. In the water, snowboarding and other tunnel sections, the controls are intuitive, and these sections work great to give more variety to the game. Puzzle sections are creative and help to make the game even more varied. Visually, the game is also varied, because it has 6 locations, with different enemies and each boss has a unique quirk to beat. There are also frequent cutscenes in the game, which make the experience mellow. The story takes around 3 to 5 hours to finish, which is standard to long for PSP standards, and the PSP version also has multiplayer. I didn't have friends to test the multiplayer component, but just know that you can play death matches and do vehicle races like in the story mode. There are 4 characters to choose from in multiplayer and it looks fun. Overall, I consider KO Challengers a hidden gem. The execution is amazing, it's varied both visually and in gameplay mechanics, the controls are responsive and good, and most importantly, 
It's a great experience and it feels high quality. I consider KO Challengers a hidden gem.